Let's get started on your day two notes over solving a system of equations using the elimination method. So today we are going to be multiplying first. I'm going to be adding a step in there before you do everything that you did yesterday. So if you do not have equations where you can eliminate a variable, you can multiply one or both equa equations by a constant, that's just a number, that's all that means, to create the same but opposite coefficients for one of the variables. So let's look at what I mean by that. So in this first problem, we're still going to write both equations so that like terms are aligned. And in this problem, I have my x values, my y values equals constant. I have both equations in standard form, which is how I like to write equations when I'm solving using the elimination method. If you have both equations in standard or slope intercept form, that's fine. But I like them in standard form. So again, we're looking for like but opposite coefficients. So in this first one, for my x coefficients, I have a 2 and a 1. My y coefficients, I have a negative 6 and a 3. In this case, I don't have like but opposite coefficients. You know, yesterday all we had to do was multiply one equation by negative 1. And we could create those like but opposite coefficients. Well, we're actually going to be doing that again today. But we're going to multiply one equation by a constant to create like but opposite coefficients. So I don't necessarily need to multiply by negative 1. I could multiply by any number. If what I do to the left is the same thing as what I do to the right, my equation still holds true. So how could I create like but opposite coefficients? Well, I'm going to look at these coefficients right here. I know that 3 is a factor of 6, or should I say 6 is a multiple of 3. If I take that 3 and I multiply it by 2, what would I get? I would get positive 6. I can't just multiply this 3 by 2. I have to multiply the entire equation by positive 2. So I'm going to rewrite that first equation equals 24, and then I'm going to rewrite the second equation, multiplying every single term by 2. So I get 2x plus 6y equals 12. And now I'm where I need to be, and you remember this from yesterday. Add equations to eliminate a variable and solve for the value of the other variable. My y values can get eliminated. 2x plus 2x is what? 4x. And then I have 24 plus 12 is 36. How do I solve for x? I divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals 9. And now I'm at my last and final step. I can substitute that value into one of the other equations to determine the value of the other variable. And it doesn't matter which equation you plug it into. I'm actually going to plug it into this one right here, x plus 3y equals 6. 9 plus 3y equals 6. So when I subtract 9 from both sides, I get 3y equals negative 3. When I divide both sides by 3, I get y equals negative 1. So my solution is 9, negative 1 as an ordered pair. Let's look at the next example. Sometimes you have to multiply more than one equation by a constant in order to create those like but opposite terms or coefficients, I'm sorry. So the first thing we're going to do is, again, make sure that the equations are aligned so that like terms are lined up. 3y equals constant. There we go. And then in this case, when I'm looking at my coefficients, I have a 3 and a 5, but 3 doesn't go into 5, or should I say 3 is not a factor of 5, and then 2 and 3, 2 doesn't go into 3, or 2 is not a factor of 3, however you want to look at it. So in this case, I'm going to multiply both equations by a constant, and it doesn't have to be the same constant. So what am I going to do here? I could multiply 3 times 5 right here, and 5 times 3 to create a coefficient of 15. Or I could multiply 2 times 3 here and 3 times 2 here and create a coefficient of 6. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to multiply this top equation by 3. So watch what happens when I do that. I get 9x plus 6y equals 27. If I multiply this bottom equation by 2, I'm going to end up with plus 6y. Really, I want like but opposite coefficients. So instead of multiplying by 2, what could I multiply by? Negative 2. So watch what this looks like. Negative 2 times every term in that second equation is negative 10x minus 6y equals negative 44. Now I'm going to add both of these equations because I've created like but opposite coefficients, so those get eliminated. 9x minus 10x is negative 1x, and then 27 minus 44 is negative 17. When I divide both sides by negative 1, I get x equals positive 17. And now we're going to substitute that value into one of the other equations. So which equation do you want to use? I'm going to use the top one just because it's there. So instead of 3x plus 2y equals 9, I'm going to write 3 times 17 plus 2y equals 9. What is 3 times 17? It's 51 plus 2y equals 9. When I subtract 51 from both sides, here's what that looks like. 9 minus 51 is negative 42. And then when I divide both sides by 2, I get that y equals negative 21. So now I'm going to write this as an ordered pair, and I get 17, negative 21. Let's move on to our last four examples. I'm going to try to get through these fairly quickly. So in number one, we're needing like but opposite coefficients. We do have our terms lined up, our x's, our y's, our equal signs, our constants, so we're good. We need like but opposite coefficients, okay? Five and eight. Think about the least common multiple of 5 and 8, where I have a 1 and a negative 3. Least common multiple is 3. I would only have to multiply one equation by a constant to create like but opposite coefficients. What would I multiply this entire equation by? By 3, positive 3. And I'm going to write it under this second equation. So I'm going to leave this second equation as is and then Right underneath it, I'm going to write my new equation. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times y is 3y. 3 times negative 17 is negative 51. And now I've got two equations, like but opposite coefficients, here. So when I add these two equations, that y variable gets eliminated. So now 15x plus 8x is what? 23x, and then negative 18 and negative 51 is negative 69. When I divide both sides by 23, I get x equals negative 3. And now I can plug in this x value into any of the other equations to solve for the y value. So let's plug it into this top one. Instead of 5x plus y, I'm going to multiply 5 times negative 3 plus y equals negative 17. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 plus y equals negative 17. When I add 15 to both sides, I get y equals negative 2. So now let's write this as an ordered pair. What would it look like as an ordered pair? x comma y, negative 3, negative 2. Let's move on to the second one. In this example, Every, all of my variables are lined up, so my equations are lined up. And I know 2 can go into 4, and I know 3 can go into 6. Okay, so how many times? What would I need to multiply that top equation by so that I have like coefficients? By 2. And if I want like and opposite coefficients, I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to leave this second equation here. I'm going to rewrite that first equation here when I multiply negative 2 into each term. So I get negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 12. And now let's add these equations together. Okay, my x variables 
disappear, they get eliminated. Y variables get eliminated, so I don't have anything left on the left side. And then 12 minus 12 is also zero, okay. When you get rid of your variables and you end with a statement that is true, zero does equal zero, your answer is infinitely many solutions. Okay, if I were ending with something that said zero equals two, that's that zero does not equal two. It would be no solution. In this case, it would be infinitely many solutions. Let's move on to number three. In number three, my terms are like are lined up. Okay, my x's, my y's, equal signs, constants. Again, it's in standard form. It doesn't have to be, but it's definitely how I like it to keep it consistent when solving by elimination. I know three can't go into four. And when I say that, three can't go into four, that means I would have to multiply both equations by something when I, when I don't have like common multiples, okay? Um, and three does not go into five. Five is not a multiple of three. So that means it doesn't matter which one I'm going to eliminate because I've got to multiply both equations by something. So let's eliminate our x variables. So the least common multiple between four and three is 12. So that's the coefficient that I'm trying to obtain. So I can multiply this top equation by three. Every term gets multiplied by three and I'm gonna have 12x plus nine y equals negative six. Now again, I don't want positive 12x, I want negative 12x. So in the second equation, I would multiply it by four. Three x times four is 12x, but if I multiply it by negative four, what am I achieving? Negative 12x. So every term gets multiplied by negative four. Five y times negative four, negative 20 y. 15 times negative four, negative 60. And now I've created equations that are equivalent and I've got like but opposite coefficients. So when I add them, those two are eliminated. 9y minus 20y is negative 11y. Negative six and negative 60 is negative 66. What do I do at this point? Divide both sides by negative 11 and I get y equals positive six. So now I've solved for the value of one variable. I can take that variable and plug it into any equation and solve for the value of the other variable. So I'll just plug it into that top equation. Instead of four x plus three y, I'm gonna multiply four, I'm gonna plug in four x plus three times six equals negative two. And then I'm just gonna solve it out. Four x plus 18 equals negative two. Now we're back to our basic two-step equation. When I subtract 18 from both sides, I get four x equals negative 20. When I divide both sides by four, I get x equals negative five. And now let's write our solution as an ordered pair. Negative five, six. Let's move on to our last problem. So this is the hardest type of example that you'll see when you're solving by elimination. Lots of things going on here. The first is that these equations aren't lined up. I like to tell my students, draw a line through that equal sign, that equal sign. When they're not lined up, your equations aren't lined up. So this first equation is in standard form. The y variable is on the left side of my equal sign. I need to move this y variable on the left side. What do I do? I'm gonna add four y to both sides. It gets eliminated from that side. And now I'm gonna rewrite my equations right here. Okay, the first one I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, just rewrite the top equation. Five x plus three y equals 32. Two x plus four y equals 10. So now I've got my equations lined up. I definitely don't have like but opposite coefficients. And I, know that five is not a multiple of two, four is not a multiple of three, which means I'm going to have to multiply both equations by something. So it doesn't matter which variable you're gonna get rid of, you're gonna have to multiply both equations by something. So what I'm gonna do is choose to get rid of the x variable. Choose to eliminate the x variable. The least common multiple between two and five is 10. So I can multiply this top equation 
by 2 in order to get that 10x there. So let's do that. I'm going to rewrite it over here. 2 times 5x is 10x plus 6y equals, what's 32 times 2? 64. If I multiply this bottom equation times 5, I'll get 10x. If I multiply it by negative 5, I'll get negative 10x, which is what I'm looking to achieve when we're solving by elimination. 4y times negative 5 is negative 20y equals 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. And now let's solve using the elimination method. So my x variables cancel out. 6 minus 20y is negative 14y. 64 minus 50 is positive 14. When I divide both sides by negative 14, I get negative 1. Then I can take that value for y and plug it into any equation that I choose. And you know what? I'm going to plug it into this equation. So 2x equals 10 minus 4 times what? Negative 1. I'm replacing that y variable with negative 1. So then I get 2x equals 10 plus 4. What is 10 plus 4? 14. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 7. So let's write this as an ordered pair. Write it in the correct order, and that would be 7, negative 1. And this concludes your notes over solving using the elimination method, typically very hard for Algebra 1 students. Day two, I hope it was helpful.